The data that we just got was actually quite good, at least sure. the headline services ISM. We'll come back to that in a moment. Do you feel that the market is vulnerable here? I think it's a bit vulnerable. I think it's a bit healthy to see the market take a little bit of a breather. We've had a really nice rally from the bottom. And while the data today was a little bit better on the manufacturing side, the employment data was a bit weaker. And I think we just went through, we're finishing up an earnings season where expectations were very, very low. And yes, they were a bit better, but we're still looking at an earnings growth rate running down about 6% year over year. So I think it's healthy to see the market take a bit of a breather. We're still constructive longer term, but we actually have a price target right now in the S&P 500 of 2025, which is actually slightly below where we are today. 2025. Well, it's it's 30 points below. I mean, is that, that, so you think we're going to decline 30 points by the end of the year? Is that what you're saying to the end well, of the year? At this point, we don't see the upside to the earnings estimate to justify a higher target. I think as we get into the third and the fourth quarter, as you look out into 2017, there is scope for and earnings recovery is a lot of the headwinds this year of a very low oil price as well as a stronger U.S. dollar start to become tailwinds. But I think it's a bit premature to focus too much on next year when we're still just at May at this point. Speaking of earnings, it looks like you say you are selectively adding to technology. How do you navigate what was kind of a mixed to disappointing bag of tech earnings? Yeah, I mean, we saw a really exciting earnings season where you had a lot of winners, but you also had a lot of losers. So to us, this argues for active management. I think areas like cloud computing, like mobility, like big data are very much intact. And so we would take advantage of the price um, action we've seen across the space and add selectively to parts of technology. And also healthcare. I mean, I think there's a lot of uncertainty around the election, obviously, and some concerns around some pricing at certain companies. But in reality, if you look at the earnings growth rate so far in the healthcare sector, we're seeing about a 5% year over year increase in earnings. And if the overall market's posting about a 6% decline, I think that looks pretty attractive. So we would be adding selectively to parts of healthcare, preferably higher quality companies with dividend yield. You know, I don't remember you as being particularly bearish ever, Stephen. For you to say, I'm just thinking about it, it's just still in my mind, the S&P is going to decline by 30 points to the end of the year, but actually next year could be better, but it's too early to be focusing on that. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say we're bearish, I'd say we're more balanced. So we're focusing a lot on but rotating exposure away from you know, broad market in the U.S. to some of our sector calls. We still very much like the dividend growth theme. And actually, right now, we're a lot more constructive on European equities. You look at the performance year to date, Europe has lagged the U.S. A lot of well, that yes. can be, it, it can be explained. Been, they've been terrible. I mean, European equities have, have really not performed at all well. They're down about seven, out the bullishness. Yes, yeah, seven to eight percent year to date. But I think there's scope for improved performance later this year. As we think the European economy remains on track. We think the underlying earnings growth still has a lot to recover versus the U.S. Okay. And valuations are attractive.